Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in your little corner of the world. My name is Torn Knight, and this is Pokemon Trading Card for the Game Boy Color. This is a going to be a first time showcase of the brand new All Battles category that was introduced earlier this year, but uh, I wouldn't be doing this alone. I'm going to be joined by the wonderful Rogan Tread, another great runner of this game. Uh, Rogan Tread, how are you doing? I'm awake, and that's about all the qualifiers that I need to commentate today, I guess. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm a basically one of the boomers of the uh, TCG uh, speedruns. I firmly stick to Charmander like it's my baby. Um, and that's the old strats, and I will stick to them until I stop running this game. Um, I haven't been as active as I want to recently, but life stuff happens, and sadly that means less time for this, but at least I can be here today to commentate for the funky All Battles run, which, uh, Toronite, you've been doing super well with recently, haven't you? Yeah, but uh, just as Charmander is your baby, All Battles has been basically my baby. We'll get into all the specifics. It's a kind of it's a kind of a long category, so without further ado, we might as well just go ahead and uh, in just a little bit, uh, we're gonna count down. We've gotta put our name in, and we're gonna be ready in five, four, three, two, one, and go. All okay. right. So we start the game by. Uh... The tutorial segment which isn't always necessary um, if you wanted to do this game without the tutorial you're more than welcome to you just add eight minutes to your time um, and for the reason for this is it's unbelievably slow but luckily that means that means uh, more time for me talking to you guys about how a trading card game works um, so the main aim of the game is to knock out opponents Pokemon shocker um, there's uh, you generally do this by using attacks, and attacks require energy. We'll get to energy in a little bit. The goal is to either knock all of the oppo opposing Pokemon out, or take uh, as many prizes that are given at the start of a the game. These prizes can vary from two prizes all the way up to six, and sadly, the uh, boss battles of this, of this game, the club leaders, not gym leaders, club leaders and the Elite Four, and Ronald, uh, all require six prizes to be taken, unless we get very lucky, and we, the luckier we get, the better we get. So, uh, how does this work? Well, you've got three types of cards. You've got your Pokemon cards, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, you've got your basic and your evolved. Uh, you've got to have a basic down. So say, like, uh, as you'll see in the tutorial, you'll have Goldeen, and in order to evolve, the Pokemon has to exist on the battlefield um, from the previous turn, and then you can just slap the Evolution Seeking on top. Um, that Pokemon, easy peasy. Um, they all have attack costs, and those attack costs are paid for by energy. This is the resource system of uh, the TCG. Um, it's very similar to mana systems in Magic or Hearthstone, what have you. Uh, you attach one per turn, unless something says otherwise. We won't be seeing that, hopefully, in the run. Um, so normally you just attach one per turn, and then you use uh, use the energy to attack. Um, once the energy is attached, uh, it stays attached unless we unless it gets removed by some effect. And yeah, um, that's energy in a nutshell. Um, the most common thing we'll be doing uh, in the run will probably be uh, Doug Trio looking for four fighting energy on it. Um, that's kind of where we want to be. Um, but most, but in the tutorial you'll see we'll be using Water and Psychic because Goldeen just needs Water Energy to attack and Seeking only needs one Water Energy to attack, for example. Now the thing that isn't explained as well in the tutorial here are the item cards, or trainer cards. I think they're called trainer cards in this game, I can't remember. I'm getting confused with the real life TTG, which has changed a lot. Uh, but uh, trainer cards, um, you can use as many of, the, of them as you like per turn. Um, this has led to one of the more degenerate uh, parts of the Pokemon trading card game, which was the beginning of time when Bill was literally Pot of Greed, which if you don't know what Pot of Greed does, it draws two cards. Really? Uh, the other one... What, really? I didn't know what uh, Pot of Greed does. Thanks for explaining it to me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's shocking how many people don't know what Pot of Greed does. Um, 
Now, uh, the other, the, apart from Bill, uh, another important one is Professor Oak, which is uh, discard your hand, draw seven. This is, uh, if you don't realize how strong that is, you just need to see it be played to understand. It is an exceptionally strong effect, and we want to see as many Bills and Professor Oaks as possible in the run. Another key one we'll be looking for is plus power, which adds 10 damage to any of our attacks. This does mean um, we hit certain breakpoints uh, for damage, and those are incredibly important, especially going on later into the game. Uh, any others? Oh, Computer Search and Item Finder. Uh, both of those discard two cards to search either from your deck, which is Computer Search, or Discard Pile, which is Item Finder. Uh, both incredibly powerful cards. Um, and to point out how powerful all these cards are, Bill and Professor Oak got um, moved into the supporter category in the latest in um, current TCG, um, uh, current modern day TCG, which means you're going to use one per turn. Uh, Bill is unfortunately unplayable, but Professor Oak still sees play to this day. Um, and uh, then we've got Computer Search. Item Finder, I can't remember what happened to it, but Computer Search uh, sees pl uh, did see play, but as a single copy in your deck. Uh, it was called an Ace when it came back. Um, uh, and you could only have one of it in your deck, and it was one of the most played... Um, if It was one of the most played Ace Specs at the time. But back to today. Um, yes, uh, you can, in fact, bill, use item search, and get bill back, and use bill again. This leads to some incredibly convoluted menuing sections um, in the game, uh, where you're just trying to find that one um, one card you want. Generally, we'll, we'll want to find um, our attacker, which is, uh, we start the game with Diglett, usually, or Hitmonchan, Charmander, there's plenty that come across the run. Um, and... Um, we want to find that, shove NG onto it, hope it doesn't get knocked out, and evolve if necessary. And as we're walking through the tutorial, uh, we're just uh, nearly at the end of it. Uh, it's As you can see, the text is extremely slow. It's why a lot of runners don't use this part, but it's been a good time to explain how the game works, at the very least. Uh, is there anything I'm missing, Toro? Uh, let me see. So the idea of the uh, of the TCG up to this point, it operates a little bit differently when it comes to weakness and resistances. So unlike in the video game where every single type is, uh, has a certain weakness, as a specific weakness, like all fires are weak to water, all grass are weak to fire, TCG operates a little bit differently where the weakness and the resistances change depending on the Pokemon. So Staryu is weak to lightning but say for example give it a have a, another water type say articuno who's also another water type in this game articuno is not weak to lightning so uh the thing that we always have to be super careful of is the is remembering not just the type matchups but also the actual pokemon matchups and even sometimes uh we use certain pokemon that on paper, they are not going to look like it's going to be a good type matchups, uh, specifically when we're dealing with some of the members of the Psychic Club. Uh, spoilers, we are going to be using fighting types for some of those fights. So yes, yeah, so that's another thing that we have to sort of be wary of. Um, the So the main thing about all battles is that unlike an any percent glitch list, where you have to basically try to beat the game as fast as possible, all battles essentially has us face and beat every single unique deck in the game. And the reason why I use that specific wording very carefully is because uh, in any percent glitch list, our first two fights with our rival Ronald, you actually don't have to win those fights. We usually actually lose those fights on purpose because it's actually faster because Ronald's AI is actually not very smart and it is actually faster to lose on purpose than to beat him than to try to beat him legitimately um however uh in all battles we actually have to win those fights and we're gonna start with our bulbasaur deck because bulbasaur has uh, has a lot of great cards to start off we get our 
We get Duck Trio, we get Hitmonchan, we get Electabuzz. We get a lot of really good cards. Um, and plus power as well. So now we are just going to have speed the this. game up. <laughs> yeah. Definitely right. time to speed the game up. And now you'll see that the text is very instant. And uh, Toro Knight's going to go for a strat called Mail Manip, which uh, requires quite a lot of concentration and hopefully a little bit of luck. Um, I'm just going to stay silent for just a moment while you attempt it. Uh, I'll explain what happens afterwards. Yeah, so I'm going to... 3, 2, 1... Okay. With a little luck, works. we'll get the res uh, no. 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 Okay, try We'll again. give it one more go. It's not required for us to do this in order to have a great time or to even do the run, but it does help us tremendously if we are able to get either a computer search, which is the one thing this like this deck lacks, or a second duck trio. Okay. That, Come on. That good. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, computer search. Excellent. Awesome. So what was happening there was uh, you use a metronome for this, right? Yes. Okay, so to explain how that works, um, basically Tarnite uses a metronome to frame perfectly, oh, as close as possible, um, uh, collect a pack at the right time. Uh, how the RNG in this game works is a bit weird. If you see the overworld, the RNG is running at 60 frames per second and it updates uh, once every frame or whatever the um, frame rate of a Game Boy Color is. I think it was 60, but I can't remember. It might be 30. Point is, it's incredibly uh, fast. It's, it's actually it is 59.7. Uh, like, okay, something's so, 59.7. Okay, so it might as well be 60. Um, so, during the time where we see the overworld, the RNG is running. If we're ever in a menu, um, the RNG is frozen. This includes during battles. We can use this information to manipulate the first mail pack um, the first mail pack that we get for free at the start of the game um, to attempt to get one of the better cards in the run which is computer search and dog trio um, the key things about those is those are rare cards as opposed to some of the others and um, computer search is a big hit so we're happy uh, we're going into our first battle here we'll be using hitmonchan this is one of the reasons why the bulbasaur deck is quite good uh, hitmonchan is just very solid. It hits for 20 for 1 energy, which is incredibly efficient, and when you get to 3 energy, it hits for 40. It's just an incredibly efficient attacker. We'll be using it a lot during the game. It's faster paced, in quotes, than Dugtrio, because Dugtrio um, needs to wait for um, 4 energy to really start hitting hard, and you need to evolve, and Diglett's incredibly frail at the start of the game. Um, so, yeah. Um... That's why we're using Hitmonchan. Uh, if you if you know about the uh, old TCG meta back in the day, Hitmonchan was part of a trio of uh, Pokemon. I think it was Electabuzz and Scyther, which made up Haymaker, uh, one of the most infamous deck, de decks of the time. Um, so yeah, we're using that because it's fast. Um, unfortunately, Toronite's getting a little unlucky with the uh, first fight, Jessica. This can happen from time to time. As you can see, he's soft resetting if things don't go his way, and just you just pop out at the um, at the battle start again and go again. We will be saving before every single fight here, and I'm not joking because it's faster. If you ever get something that seems unwinnable, um, you don't want to um, you don't want to uh, keep going unless it's really late into the fight. Um, and uh, here, finally, we're through Jessica first fight. Normally she's a bit of a gimme, but she can be a bit of a pain. Um, one of the first three fighting members, which are spread across uh, three uh, clubs, and we have to be all of them to unlock their boss, uh, Mitch. So that's the first one down, and she is the least annoying of the three. The most annoying you just saw there at the start of the um, grass club. Uh, that's Michael. We dislike Michael. He's incredibly powerful for the early game. He, in fact, basically uses Haymaker, the deck, uh, with a few changes to it. Uh, I think he's got Magmars and Kangaskhans. For... Does he have Kangaskhans? He does. Uh, he yeah. Does. Uh, had, yeah, so one of the things... So the reason why he reset, even though this fight... Even though there is hardly any fight, that, any Pokemon in Heather's deck that will... Oh my god, I'm... This is... 
Wow, that was a really weird wonky RNG. So the whole thing about it is that uh, we want to try to get uh, a fast fight. It's not just get a winnable fight, but get a fast winnable fight. And oftentimes it's faster if we just reset, if we're going up against like a three versus one, even if we can win that three versus one or four versus one, it's sometimes faster to just say, you know what? I'm going to hope to get like a one versus one or a uh two versus one at the most so that is hopefully what we are now dealing with um the other thing about this game is a lot of it's a mental challenge because you're now it, it's also a battle against yourself in a way because now you're trying to sort of trying to figure out okay is this fight winnable or can i save time by going at it a little bit faster it's really also a fight to see whether or not you succumb to the sunk cost fallacy like whether or not you invest you invest so much time in one specific fight and you know you just kind of don't want to do you just don't want to see all that progress go to waste by doing a reset so uh this can be a bit of a challenge sometimes i am very guilty of the sunk cost fallacy um when it comes to this game, there's often times where I keep going on a fight where I really shouldn't. I just should reset. I mean, there's only one specific fight, uh, which is the first of the Elite Four, which you really don't want to, where you will keep going most of the time because that startup sequence to get to her, there's the whole sort of, in quotes, cutscene of meeting her and all the Elite Fours, like, you're going to fight these four, woo! Uh, and that takes quite a lot of time, so. That's one of the few fights where you won't reset as much as anywhere else. But apart from that, yeah. The the emphasis is very much on fight fast and fight hard. And um, Michael, Michael is one of the worst, absolute worst fights in the game. Um, just He just is. Just take my word for it. He's mean. He just has great cards in his deck. And it's one of, if not the hardest fight in the early game. Luckily, we're through one Pokemon. We're praying for no, no more. Unfortunately, by saying that, I cursed it. Um, uh, I'm going to reset that fight because that yeah. looked like a scenario late where we might have lost. Yeah. Because that Magmar could be doing 30 damage. Yeah. Okay, a potion. We happen to go potion. first. Okay, Magmar's that's, fine. Uh, this, that's still a... Okay, this is still a dicey fight, but two potions it gives us a potential out. Yeah, two, two potions is good. Um, one one other thing that's interesting about the AI of this game is we can see what they're thinking a lot of the time. So this Magmar here, he saw it was going to get knocked out, so he didn't attach an energy to it. And then he attached a defender afterwards, because this game is smart. Um, so instead of attacking us for 30, uh, <laughs> he just put a defender up and put an energy elsewhere. Uh, we can abuse this to some extent. Um, there's a lot of times where you can abuse this uh, AI knowledge uh, because it's pretty primitive at the end of the day. I mean, this game was made a long time ago. I can't remember when exactly, but I was small when it came out. <laughs> it was, you know, I was three game when this game time. came out. Oh man, I still remember playing this way back when. Oh, Scyther and Oak was that nice. That's what we and and a second Hitmonchan. Oh, oh, second Hitmonchan helps a lot. Um, and this is. There's few things we will do to... Oh my lord! Oh, we like to see it. We love to okay, see it. great trainers there. Um, right. Notably, I, I, I like getting that. three Professor Oaks is huge. Um, and one extra plus power and an extra hit one chan is absurdly good luck to start the run. Um, now we'll see the power of Professor Oak um, come to fruition. And we lead into the uh, Pikachu meme deck, which is, in fact, one of the more annoying fights that I often lose <laughs> lose a lot of time to. We want to not see Flying Pikachu. Um, Flying Pikachu crucially has a resistance to fighting. Um, and every other Pikachu she has has a weakness to fighting. So hence why we'll fight this fight with uh, Hitmochan. Um, I normally do it with Doug, uh, Diglets and um, Charmanders. Uh, I specifically have the Charmanders for <laughs> the Flying Pikachu because it's that annoying and Diglett can't get through it most of the time unless you uh, evolve it. But we've been good. This has been good. This'll do. Just one more turn of no Flying Pikachu and be happy. 
Okay, we're good. Let's we're good. see. Uh, come on. We don't get paralyzed. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, uh, oh, could this be? Uh, my. Uh, a sec. Is there a second Professor Oak? Okay. Oh, here. There oh, we go. Professor Oak. Yep. Yeah, so as you can see, there's the power of Professor Oak. Uh, we just went through 14 cards of our deck to find a full heal to get rid of that paralysis. Um, and th this is why things... Um, this is why it got nerfed into a supporter. Uh, <laughs> it's incredibly powerful, and the key thing about Professor Oak over something like Computer Search is, it's instant card draw as opposed to having to search for the card in your deck, uh, which makes for much faster play, um, which is great. Um, Ooh, that's Zapdos. I am Oh, uh, yeah. That. Zapdos is an instant reset on um, Brandon. Uh, Zapdos is basically unkillable for all intents and purposes. It has a resistance to fighting, because why not? Um, while everything else has a weakness to fighting, again, uh, reminiscent of... Um, uh, was it uh, Jennifer now? Just then. Um... The key thing about the Lightning Club is, uh, and you'll see this across some clubs as well, I think the Water Club sometimes does this as well, is the Paralysis Status Condition. Um, it's way worse than it is in uh, regular games, uh, because if you get paralyzed, you the only way to get out of it is switching out of it or um, full healing. And um, Unfortunately, all of these are coin flips, and while we can do some stuff to mitigate the coin flips, because, as I said earlier, the RNG is fixed while in a battle, so there are some things we can do to advance the RNG and attempt again, um, but uh, most of the time we don't... It's usually a last resort to do that, rather than a first resort, and retreating is costly a lot of the time, unless we're on Diglets. Oh, a Doug Trio! We love to see it. Another Doug Trio. We're eating good today, that's for sure. Yeah, no, this is a uh, uh, RNG so far in terms of our price packs. It's been, I would say, I would say maybe above average. And oh my god, perfect! Oh, maybe, maybe above a... average. My, man, th th this is this is go. like 80th, it's 90th percentile. It, it's really, really good RNG. The only thing we want more of right now is one more plus power. And uh, third, I don't third think we need that third. <laughs> I don't think we need that third hit more chan. We'll take it, but yeah, we want more bills and as many bills as we can pick up, and one more plus power. Uh, those are the uh, key things. Okay, we're looking for. Okay, that is uh, okay. Fire type wise, this is actually really unfortunate. That is, uh, well, we can manage. But... So right, we're coming up to. Um, one of the weirder fights of the run, Amanda, in the Water Club, noted for having a lot of colorless Pokemon and Scyther in her deck. Uh, and unfortunately, Scyther is in an instant reset because um, uh, Toro was unfortunate not to get any Charmanders, which is what we'd usually use to take care of the Scythers, because Charmander's just a very efficient attacker. Uh, are we going all out? Come on, come and, on, come on. Right. Uh, yeah, you can... Okay, I was going to hope that. Pokeball can... Yeah, potentially scout out the deck to see if Oak will get us. Right, Oak again. So the key thing about Poke Pokeball um, and any search effects in the game is you can look at the deck's order. Um, so when you search, the deck is in the order from top to bottom, as in the next card uh, you'll draw, I th uh, uh, all the way uh, down to the final card. If you re so if you perform a soft reset while looking at your deck. The order will not change, which means we can scout the first seven cards if we've got an oak in hand, or a first two cards if we've got a bill in hand, that sort of thing. And we could just leave things as they are, or shuffle the deck, depending on what we need. Um, we're unfortunate there not to get the heads for Pokeball to work, but it is what it is. Um, Normally now... in this, um, for this fight on marathons, we actually, we would go for a marathon safe strat. Here's kind of the unfortunate part. The Marathon Safe Strat involves us having Charmander. And this is extremely unusual, but we actually don't have a Charmander in the deck. And okay. Is it... but to put it into context, Charmander is a common card. And while we managed to hit our rares and uncommons, like Fessor X and Uncommon, and 
most of the what was it? Most of most of it, like Doug Trio, Hitmonchan, Computer Search. Those are all rares. Um, that's kind of what we wanted. Uh, just missing out means that we're in a tough spot here. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can get a gust of wind. Is it coming? Oh, yeah, that, I that can't might even. Work. Because uh, there is a polywag ready to be attacked. Yeah, it's just you just need. You got three turns to find the gust. Okay. Uh, do I dare? You know what? Yeah. Just, just just go for it. There, there is. it is. Okay, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until next turn because just so that I can ensure I get the KO. And there's no. A gust of wind. Um, an infamous card in the TCG allows you to pick any of the opponent's bench Pokemon and bring it to the active. This too got nerfed in later games, and uh, in the current TCG, it's a supporter effect as well, known as Boss's Orders or Lysander, more, more famously. Um, still an incredibly powerful effect, and luckily it managed to get us our final prize and get out of Amanda, which means the majority of the terrible early game fights are done. Not all of them. Chris is still liable to be a pain in the backside. Um, Chris is essentially, I would say, a poor man's Michael. But it still means he's annoying as all heck. I mean, he still has Hitmonchan. Kangaskhan, we don't like seeing anyway, because Kang the problem with Kangaskhan means they draw cards, because it has an attack for one energy, which literally just draws a card. That's it. Um, unfortunately, drawing cards mean they have more chances to draw more Pokemon from their deck and extend the fight. Luckily here, with the plus power, we get the 90 damage cr crucially on the Kangaskhan and KO. Normally we'd only do 80 because of weakness, uh, but the, this is one of the key breakpoints where that extra 10 damage from plus power is um, is necessary. So Chris over and done with is great, and now we go on to the stuff I'm less familiar with because <laughs> these are the Rock Club uh, fights. Rock Club, you generally just go to Gene, say hi, Beat Gene and run away. That's generally what happens in the um, in the uh, regular speedrun. However, we're fighting all three of the um, of the minion trainers, which are Matthew, Andrew, and Ryan. So this is very unfamiliar territory for me. Um, would you like to summarize any of them? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I noteworthy? can. Very much so. So starting off with Matthew. Uh, we're gonna go Matthew, then Andrew, then Ryan. So it starts off with Matthew, which the best way I can describe it is, is he is the... He essentially is practice for Gene. His deck is very, very similar to, to Gene the Club Master. So even in a casual play, if you want to practice for Gene without ever having to face him, Matthew is kind of the your guy to go to. Andrew... Uh, his deck is called the blistering uh, something blistering Pokemon deck, uh, which, which means that he actually has a believe it or not, he actually has a fire Pokemon in his blistering Pokemon deck, and uh, and I want you to uh, see if you can answer this one for me, Rock. Uh, what is blistering about Jinx? Jinx. Well. <laughs> um, it J Jinx, blistering Jinx. Um, all I can think of as is how she blisters our ears with her cry, uh, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, we can't uh, hear know in the game think... because Pokemon cries aren't a thing in this game. Yeah. So honestly, <laughs> um, yeah, that that's that's an interesting one. Uh, so um, just to tap on Scyther here, because this isn't- Scyther is going to be used for the next uh, four fights. Scyther has two attacks, Swords Dance and um, uh, Slash. Uh, the key thing about Swords Dance is it doubles the next attack- uh, doubles the damage of the next attack uh, Scyther uses, and um, Slash does 30 damage. Now, often we will be Swords Dancing if we don't get the one hit, because if we hit something- then um, the trainers are likely to use potions, defenders, all sorts of nonsense, and waste time. So we want to be getting one hits and Scyther with weakness, um, with weakness and Swords Dance can hit for up to 120. Um, now here we have our favorite, well favorite, in 
uh, least favorite thing of all time, which is Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn, um, uh, like, in the same way that Eevee and Chansey to a lesser extent, have these attacks, which are stall attacks, they do no damage, they just say, you can't attack next turn, or you can't, uh, I can't take damage next turn. Um, these are incredibly infuriating, um, and every time we see a heads, we just gotta wait one more turn. That's just the way it is with Rhyhorn. Gotta love um, the Leer Lock. There we go. Leer Lock. Um, there are some things we can do, like we can, uh, can we gust of wind out of, I can't, I don't know if we can gust of wind out of it. We can. Uh, um, we can, okay. Yes, we can. Problem is, I, I want to get rid of the, uh, the Rhyhorn. It, even though Ponyta is technically a bigger threat because it can hit us for weaknesses, uh, I don't want to go through eight more turns of the leader lock, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. So, things we hate the most in this game are the coin flips on heads on anything with a paralysis attack or a uh, denial attack like, um, whatchamacallit, uh, like a leer, tail wag, uh, what's the other? Uh, what's the other one? Gus. Uh, yeah, you go. There we go. Uh, Leer, tail wag, and Chansey's a scrunch. Yeah, uh, we want to avoid all the heads on those as much as we can. Unfortunately, we haven't been getting so lucky with those right now. That's just the way of things. Welcome to RNG game. <laughs> We're getting more Professor Oaks because we didn't have enough of them. You know, this is how it is. As we move on to Ryan, um, more stuff I've never seen before. Yeah, it's, Ryan it's is. Ryan's kind of a weird deck because it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to explain what his deck is. He's got Shelders. He's got uh, the mysterious fossil Pokemon. He's got Hitmonchan. Uh, Sand Slash is actually the one you kind of want to worry about a little bit, only because uh, Sand Slash has Sand Attack, which means that it can, if need be. Uh, basically put you in another stun lock with sand attack. So the way sand attack works is that if you you get hit with 10 damage, and if you want to attack, you have to flip a coin flip in order to attack. And if you and if it lands heads, then uh, you can attack. But if it lands tails, then unfortunately the attack will uh, the turn is automatically over. Yeah. So, Shelda had a stall attack there, but unlike Rhyhorn's, um, Shelda simply prevents damage being dealt wow. to it. Um, real. What he has is choice this words RNG? for this particular Shelda. He is hiding in his shell for his life. Um, oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, oh, we love it. We there we go. It. There we, we go. This game. Me out of the <laughs> hide and shell lock. So the crucial thing about hide and shell and scrunch is you can at least attack. It just means you. Um, we hold attack. on. Now, 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 hold on. Let's see if we can test something out. Okay, we have a poke. Okay, okay. It was going to be right, a, a poke. So tails. this is RNG manipulation here. Um, there we, we go. Okay, so what happened there was Toro used a pokeball um, to eat the tails that he was going to flip. Uh, in order to advance the RNG one stage, um, to get uh, to get to get a chance at a heads, which luckily worked. Which meant we're finally done with um, Ryan. Th yeah, th this game has some very interesting uh, concepts on what consists of a rock type uh, <laughs> rock type uh, fighter, uh, and this. Go I mean, look across the game, they wanted to showcase all of the cards as much as possible, which means shoehorning them into very weird situations. I'm sure that deck was meant to be a fossil one, but then Shelter exists in it for some reason. Blistering Love, or whatever the um, how the deck was, who knows what they were going for for that one. Um, but at least Gene is somewhat honest in that he has only rock Pokemon as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Yeah, so... This means that Scyther actually hits them for 120 damage uh, with uh, Sword Stance and just 60 otherwise, which is great. Um, generally, again, we just don't want to see Raihorn, which we haven't seen for a while, but we love that. Um, and while, while I'm here, th this isn't uh, a good time to talk about how types work in this game, because you saw earlier we had Hitmonchan, a fighting type, um, with its own weaknesses and whatever. And now we have rock types using the same type. Um, this is broad. This is 
sort of the amalgamation of types that Pokemon did to reduce the amount of, well, to have the most overlap possible, because otherwise we'd have goodness knows how many energy types, um, and it would be a bit of a mess, frankly. Um, they did later add darkness energy, steel energy, and at one point fairy, but unfortunately fairy uh, got cut recently, and now it's an amalgamation of the psychic type. Um, so what counts as what type? Fire types, very simple, it's just fire. Colorless tends to be normal type Pokemon. Um, sometimes fly normal flying as well gets covered under that. Uh, then you've got grass. Grass covers poison, bug, or something, sorry. Sometimes covers poison, uh, always covers grass and always covers bug. Uh, water is water and ice, that's an easy one. Electric is electric, easy. Uh, fighting is ground, rock, and fighting itself. Psychic is ghost, sometimes poison, and always psychic. Uh, and those are the types. Um, it just means the energy system is more forgiving, shall we say. Because otherwise we'd have... How many types are there again? It was like 12 at this point in time, which would have been a horrendous mess for collectors and oh, yeah. players aside. And I'm glad they uh, didn't do that. <laughs> But it does mean you get some really weird interactions, uh, theoretically, um, which make no sense. Such a uh, what, what's a good what's a good uh, weakness matchup that makes absolutely no sense in the regular games that works in this game? Uh, oh, a simple one. Um, a rock type, so Geodude, for example, doesn't do uh, weak doesn't do weakness on uh, a Zapdos, for example. Because Zapdos is flying, it has a resistance to fighting, and Geodude is a fighting type. When it's also a rock type in the regular game. So you, you get these weird interactions like that from time to time. So that's just the nature of deck building games. <laughs> Another funny one uh, that I like is that, first of all, I'm gonna talk, I have to talk to this little lass here because uh, she, in order to talk to uh, fight a certain boss in the game, we have to also, uh, we have to talk to her and trigger his appearance. Uh, another one that I also really like, that also is really funny, is Gyarados. In this game, Gyarados is only weak to grass, which is really funny considering that the in the uh, in the video games, it's four times weak to electric. Yet in the, in this game, it's not even a weakness to begin with. That I always, you know, the fact that I forgot about that part um i always assumed like this is the thing you find out new things every day with this game um oh and, and our, that's uh, one of our <laughs> one of our great great runners uh aj in the chat also mentioned the, the Carados weakness and ooh, that is a fan that's a fantastic that was a, that, that's that one was of incredible. the better packs you can get uh having this the the importance of having a second um a second version of the uh, main attacker is great in case we lose the first one and also reduces the amount of time we shuffle the deck. Um, because of the nature of our decks, for the most part we'll be using one to four basic Pokemon. If you don't have that in your hand, do you will mulligan, as in shuffle the deck and draw another seven. Um, this can lead to some interesting times where we're shuffling the deck for 10, 20 seconds just to find our one uh, Pokemon. In the normal game, and this was in the rules at the time, every time you took a mulligan, your opponent could draw a card. And that's uh, stuck to this day. Um, that's one of the few rules that stuck to this day, but not in the TCG uh, game here. Um, they don't draw any extra cards, you don't draw any extra cards, it's just you mulligan until you go. Thank goodness that that's the thing, because otherwise it would lead to even more time wasted. <laughs> Um, now, you see Tauro Knight using a Mysterious Fossil here. Mysterious Fossil is useful for being a, what we call a chump blocker. Good thing about Mysterious Fossil is, um, we can discard it at any time, um, and it will eat attacks from opposing Pokemon like this Lapras here. Lapras, uh, we don't like Lapras. Lapras is mean, it's nasty, and thank goodness we got through it in one hit. Uh, Lapras has, uh... Was it attack for two that does, uh, for two energy that confuses? Is that the one yes. I'm thinking of? Yeah. Confusion is uh, not the same as it is in the regular game these days. Confusion, um, in this game at least, 
means if you would try to retreat the Pokemon, uh, retreating, I didn't explain that, is just moving off the bench, uh, off the active spot and onto the bench and putting one of your bench Pokemon in. It's like swapping Pokemon in uh, uh, in the regular games. Um, if you would attempt to do that or attack while confused, you have to flip a coin. If it's tails, the action doesn't occur. And if you were attacking, you take 30 damage. That one. Um, and the attacking part has stayed true into the game as it exists right now. Uh, the retreating, however, has changed in the modern day. You can retreat normally if you're confused. Um, I remember pointing this out during a stream of uh, the regular thing, thinking, wait, why doesn't he have to flip a coin to retreat? And I got called a boomer in chat, which is fair, because I am one, let's be real. But um, confusion and paralysis are the two things we want to avoid. Um, Squirtle, for example. Did you know Squirtle can paralyze you? Little known fact, that one. Um, yes. Why? Who knows? Who knows? They loved paralysis in the early uh, in the early days of uh, the Pokemon TCG. And is that a two prize Amy I spy? Oh, yep. lovely. We love that. So. We get through our second uh, boss battle here. Uh, we've uh, gone through Gene, we've gone through Amy. Um, boss battles, I'm afraid to say that they're, they're a bunch of cheaters, and I'm not. So I'm saying this unironically. How it works is, in their opening hand, they are guaranteed to have, uh, they're guaranteed to have two in the opening, uh, two basic Pokemon in the opening hand, along with two energy. Now, uh, they are also guaranteed to have another two basic energy and another two basic Pokemon in the top six cards of their deck, which means two boss fights usually taking four prizes minimum and often more. If you ever get a two prize or the rare, the extremely rare and coveted one prize boss fight, um, then you're jumping for joy. And the only times you can get one prize fights are in the Elite Four and we'll come across those if we're lucky. Um, they're, they're very fringe cases uh, because of how the decks work. Um, now we get on to our first Ronald fight, which normally we would use Magnus Might and Self-Destruct, um, but we're not doing that today. What we're doing today is we are simply uh, slapping with Diglett. We love Diglett. Diglett's the best boy, honestly. Dugtrio's... Dugtrio and Diglett are our favorites by no small margin. They are... Um, they're just fantastic. Uh, Diglett is a very efficient attacker. Um, 10 damage for one isn't great, but 30 damage for two energy is excellent. Um, and um, Dugtrio then is 40 for three and 70 for four. Uh, just really efficient. Draw the Dugtrio and start smashing. Uh, we love Earthquake. Who doesn't love a good Earthquake? And Earthquake is winning big again. And thank goodness that Wartle will hit a tails because otherwise we'll be in more of a stunlock situation. <laughs> oh yeah, the um, the the funny thing about Ronald, and you kind of start to notice this throughout the rest of the run as we encounter him several times. Ronald doesn't really know how to build a deck. This deck has seriously very little synergy, and there's only like one version of Ronald that. When you like actually look at it top to bottom, you can actually say, okay, you know what? That's actually a competent deck. So if you actually look up Ronald's decks online and you, you know, you take a look at it through the lens of, a, of a, you know, of a competitive TCG player, Ronald, uh, you'll look at Ronald and you'll think to yourself, um, you know, the guy doesn't really know how to build a deck. And the final encounter that we'll have with Ronald uh, will be the perfect example. I don't want to spoil. I'm not what... spoiling that because that is no, we're not, terrible. We're not um, spoiling how bad Ronald's deck building is in that instance, but you'll you will uh, you'll all see. Oh, you'll see. All right. Um, just think of Ronald as your average kid at the time. Just like I'm going to slap every good card into my deck and hope it works. And he has he slaps all the good Pokemon to his deck, and good is subjective. Uh, especially, I think the final fight is the biggest case of this. But you just slap all the cool Pokemon into your deck, and then think nothing. Think of nothing else. You just I want my cool Pokemon. I'll put them into a deck, and I'll beat you. That doesn't work. Um, but um, 
Yeah, his deck building is questionable at best. Uh, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Um, and terrible at most times. I am will say one thing that I am uh, up to this run. I mean, we've had some pretty crud RNG early on, but I will say the bosses have been behaving very, very well in this in this run so far. They, they I... have been gentle. They have been very gentle, and I am appreciating it because you've had some shockers so far. And th this is this is RNG that's more normal. I mean, Amy was lovely, but um, the first Ronald and uh, Isaac were fine too. Uh, Gene was relatively okay. You know, four, four prize fights is the norm, and we just kind of accept that. That's just the way of things. Um, it is what it is. If you get anything better than a four prize, you're jumping for joy. Um, but this looks like another four prize, or it might be five or six if we're unlucky. Um, uh, again, um, early deck building symptoms. This is one of the stranger ones. Um, the uh, head of the fire gym. Head of the fire gym, known for that lovely, fiery goodness like Growlithe and um, Chansey. Yes. And that Jigglypuff. Notable fire type, Cha Chansey and Jigglypuff. Yes. And Tauros. How could we forget the lovely fire type Tauros? He truly was ahead of his time when he was putting Tauros into his fire deck, and it only took. How many generations are we on now <laughs> for a fire type Taurus <laughs> to actually be a thing? <laughs> I, I lose count. Um, it, it Ken you know, went to one. the uh, uh, Flint Pokemon Diamond and Pearl School of Fire uh, team building. Yeah. And now, now, oh dear, here we go. This is one of my more, well, thankfully not quite yet, but soon we'll be going on to one of the more rubbish fights of the run. I don't know how bad Stephanie is here, but Oh no, Mari... she's just as oh she's just as bad as the fight you were thinking of. She's just Oh as okay, bad. she's just as, she's just as terrible. Excellent. So now we have two terrible fights. Um and, if you ooh, ever this played this really bad. If you ever played this casually, Murray, you remember Murray. You remember that smug guy at the back of the psychic club that didn't turn up for some reason and then suddenly just started uh, and just gave you nightmares. Well, there's... Uh, spoiler alert, there's no good way for dealing with Murray. And, uh, oh my days, this deck is just as terrible as uh, Murray's. Wait, so the, wow. Oh days. Okay, that's a, that's a new that's, one. That's Stephanie a using super energy removal. That's a new I one. I have never seen the super energy removal used against me. Um, super energy removal, uh, for those who don't know... Um, you discard an energy from one of your own Pokémon to remove two from the opposing Pokémon. Um, this is one of the more powerful um, effects of the early days, um, if not one of the most powerful. Um, it was incredibly good at the time. Uh, energy removal effects were incredibly powerful at the time, and thankfully this game does it. It doesn't. It doesn't exist um, for the most part. Um, in the sequel to this, however. They are rampant. They are like a plague, and uh, AJ could tell you plenty about that because uh, that is <laughs> uh, it's a nightmare, all right. Um, thankfully, here we have a Doug Trio and Doug Trio Smash. Um, now the thing is, we have the second Mr. Mime, which oh is gosh, fine. We cause... hate Mr. Mime. We hate Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime, most notably, has an ability that says if you were to take more than twenty damage. You take no damage, which um, means that Dugtrio literally cannot hurt um, Mr. Mine. And Diglett has that awkward in-between of doing 10 damage and 30 damage. Um, yes, we can use plus power to get through it, like we did here. But Mr. Mine is frustrating, to say the least. To the point where, um, in the old days, and sometimes I still do this, you would add Ratata, a literal Ratata, um, to your deck in order to beat Mar just those Mr. Mimes, because Ratata has an attack for one energy that's 20 damage, and conveniently resists Psychic, and has no retreat cost, so you're living the best life there. Um, and yeah, it turns out Ratata was great. 
This looks okay. So, so far, oh. this is going fine. Uh, I think I have a full heal, so if he paralyzes me... Okay, no, we're in the clear. We're oh, in the okay. clear. The, so, issue uh... with, the issue with this fight is that if, uh, if you give Murray a chance, he can potentially try to set up Kadabra and Alakazam. Kadabra, especially when you have... The, the name of the game for Murray is Stall, Stall, Stall. So you will see... You've seen him use energy removal several times already. He just used Pokemon Center when it, you know, it really didn't do anything. And he's got Chansey, which, again, uh, fantastic uh, Psychic type. Uh, same with Snorlax. Yep, uh, yep like, those well-known Psychic types. Um... The thing with Chansey and uh, Snorlax we won't see much more of. Um, oh my days. But yeah. Kangaskhan's we'll see plenty of. Um, Murray has that combination of the most an of energy removal, which is one of the rare fights to actually have energy removal, as it happens. Um, energy removal is extremely rare in this game, and Murray is unfortunately one of the few fights where you have four ofs in it. Um, it is what it is. You can't, you can't do everything. Um, and unfortunately, this is one of the worst Murrays I've seen in a long time. He's pulling out all the trolls for you uh, in every sense of the word. My days. It's just, it's one of those days. Murray is the killer of runs, is one of the killers of runs. Um, especially in the mid game, he's the biggest killer, I would say. Uh, I think no one even compares mid game to him. Uh, late game, there's arguments that uh, there's a couple of fights in the end game that are more risky and more trolly. Um, and in the early game, you could argue that Michael or Amanda, um, and sometimes if you fight Brittany as well in the early game, those can be argued as more trolly. But um, Murray, Murray is the mid-game monster that gatekeeps a lot of runs, unfortunately. Um, and the funny thing about this, uh, this uh, fight in particular is because Murray is the only fight in the entire game that has a metal flag, meaning you actually cannot fight Murray until you have at least four medals. So routing the, any category that involves a fight with Murray is really is really a test of patience and research because you are going to always Rag, how many times have we in in on the Pokemon TCG speedrunning Discord have we thought, okay, maybe this specific uh, route could work, and inevitably we come to the same conclusion? Oh wait, it won't work because of uh, Murray, because Murray is at the um, because Murray is going to prevent us from. Actually, I need to attack this turn. Not uh, wait until next turn. No, you uh, if you if you. Top deck of plus value, yeah. Um, so yeah, there, there are a couple of fights that are gated. Um, the ones that are not gated are, well, not heavily gated in any meaningful way. Um, so so what do we got? We have, we start the game off with Mitch. Mitch, crucially, you have to talk to him at the beginning of the game, beat his three trainers across all the clubs, and then come back and beat him. That's, you know, that's, a, that's one of the wilder requirements. Um, Especially because the three fights are very awkward to get to, because they're spread across the world, you spend time traveling between them, and we kind of want to... Um, we kind of want to get to them when we pass by the clubs. The less overworld movement, the better, because it does take a little bit of time. Um, now, uh, Amy and Isaac simply say, beat our trainers, then we'll beat you. Um, uh, Nikki, the grass, the grass one, says, "You know what? I'm not going to turn up at my club. I'm just going to sit in um, Ishihara's house, but not actually turn up until you've beaten all three of my trainers." Um, so that's four. That's four uh, gym leaders gated by trainers already. However, then you've got uh, Murray, who has the four medal requirement, which is a pain. Ken, which is slightly awkward. Um, you have to have a certain amount of cards in your collection, and usually Ken is, uh, you take Ken on after the, in the sort of third, fourth, um, position, just because you just need a few, um, you just need, you just need a few cards in your collection, and you'll get those. Um, 
And then, who am I missing? Isaac I've mentioned already. Uh, Isaac I probably didn't mention, but he's another just fight my trainers, fight me. And then, oh, Rick. Rick has only one trainer gating him, um, which is nice. Um, that's not too bad. But the problem with routing is Murray is the biggest, <clears throat> biggest pain because we always want to fight him earlier than, um, than we do because it's just convenient deck editing wise. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, but he always ends because he's gated till the fifth. Uh, Whoa, that's club badge. It's that's... it's not great, um, unfortunately. That's the. Um, a... I didn't think Aaron would would bring out the Rhyhorn. Uh, that is totally fine. Uh, anyway, so this is another new fight, and if you remember from the very beginning when I said uh, the rules of the category. And, and again, and I made sure to really be specific with the wording, beat every unique deck, not it beat every fight, beat every unique deck. And this is why I worded it like that. Uh, because Aaron is the only NPC in the fight, uh, in the game that not named Ronald, whom you can actually fight with three different decks. He's got a hybrid deck uh of two different types in his uh per deck and he's generally not difficult but he can be potentially annoying and the, and uh, in fact part of the annoyance with him is that you have to do two different menus just to get him to fight and when you're trying to go at it really really fast sometimes you just miss out on the you just miss out on on actually doing the fight because you just go so fast that uh, you actually do a misclick. Yeah. I've never seen Aaron before. The, the whole gimmick about Aaron is uh, he gives you packs full of energy. Um, you'd think that this would be an efficient way to get um, um, energy, but there's a better way at the beginning of the run, which I didn't mention. Um, how it works is at, the be at any point during the game. If you have less than a certain amount of energy available to you in um, that are not already put in your decks, you can talk to the guy to the right of, of the Professor Mason and he'll give you just a ton of energy. Um, I think it's like 10 of every type, something like that. Yes. And we can abuse this early game and get 20 energy of every type and then be good on energy for the rest of the run. Um, something you could do casually as well. Uh, the easiest way to do it is when you get your first deck, you just slap, uh, you make a new deck, you slap Bulbasaur in it, add as much energy as possible to it, and then go talk to the guy twice. He'll gi he'll give you just that guy who's we passed on the exit there. Um, he'll give you all that energy. Now we come to the fun part, the challenge cup. Ooh, Yay! Hell yeah, so... This is an interesting fight because you uh, think because it's basically this is the one Ronald fight that you do not encounter in any percent glitch list. But to get to that fight, you actually have to fight two random NPCs in this fight. And I got really, really lucky uh, with the uh, with the RNG because the game uh, will choose any two random NPCs with the exception of are roaming boss Imakuni and Eren. Aside from him, uh, those two, everyone is uh, fair game. So one thing that I generally try to do, and this is a bit of a difference between the way the uh, current world record holder Welsh uh, TCG and I uh, operate, is that he basically goes at it with a full the trio deck and just try to brute force everything. I try my best to make the deck uh, to basically adjust the deck to the opponent. And that's why I kind of went to the right uh, instead of talking to the receptionist at the very beginning because I wanted to see what was the sprite. And that sprite, that can only be two fights in the game, Nicholas or Brandon, which is perfect. Um, You've got Adam here. Adam. Ooh, this is Adam. He is one of, he is one of the fire types. He is one of, yes. one of the fire he, he is, is one uh, of the fire types, yeah. Um, so yeah, Adam, just move on to This is an yeah. interesting one. Yeah. So we are going to... Totally swap to water, then. 
right. Water war will, will work. I mean, I theoretically, I could have tried to go at it with a uh, strip with uh, with the the trio strategy, but better safe than sorry. And like we have, we have a perfect opening hand. Like, yeah, that's that's all you can ask for. In the opening hand, you tend to just want your basic Pokemon, your evolution Pokemon, and just as much energy as necessary. Um, this is a great one. Do we have a? Um... Oh, we have a plus power. There we go. I was about to say, oh, do yeah, we yeah. have a plus power? We have a plus power off the top we of the deck. We got two. Good, in fact. Uh, yeah. That's great. And oh, why is there Eevee? I, I I'm sorry, Eevee lovers. If you like Eevee, I'm sorry. I really hate Eevee in this game. It's one of the most annoying things in the world. Um, that smug little fluffy thing. Um, it just oh my gosh. Really it just good. Tail for... wags. It stalls for really time. It does fights. nothing useful. Sorry, Eevee lovers. <laughs> Yeah, I will say, as far as random and the randomness of the NPCs for the first two rounds of the Challenge Cup, um, this is actually pretty good. This, this is actually good RNG in terms of the opponent. It, we could have gotten so... Uh, the RNG could have gotten so much worse. We have not had a single Charmander. That, this is That's unbelievable. That's kind of exceptional. That, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Ever. Have you uh, got... Uh, is, uh, you got Magmas. Magmas too. Yes, Magmar can work. So this version of Ronald, I would say, is the most competent version of Ronald. If you look at like how he builds his deck, uh, in the sense that he's got he's got Muck, he's got Geodo, and he's got Scyther. That's kind of the main problem is that he's got Scyther and he's got Chansey. That's true. Nice. So what does he have? That's he has Scyther. So. So that is, you know what? That's actually completely fine. Uh, the only problem would be if he. Oh, Gust is good. Ah, but I do not have a another fire. fire. So we're gonna stay put for now. Oh boy. This is. Uh... Are you gonna get double edged? I might get double edged. Uh, You're gonna actually, get double edged. <laughs> I don't have a fire. I don't have another fire energy. So it w so I would have been uh, doing nothing anyway. So... And oh, that's that's a good hand. There we go. Yes. We've got Doug Trio. We've got Energy. It's all we want. Wait, um, it doesn't. It's the same start. Uh, same okay. start for him, but we have a much better start. So that's. Good. Oh, come off it. That is. <laughs> uh. Ooh. Let's at least start doing just a tiny bit of chip damage. Start chipping. The I'm chunk. fine. Yeah. I'm fine with solely focusing on Doug Trio. Because Duck Trio can potentially well now this is getting a little bit ridiculous. Okay, so this is actually yeah. this is kind of a un very unique situation. Uh, oh, this that's is... a that's a good top deck. There we go. Perfect. This now... is yeah, that's excellent. So now do, thankfully... do we bait out the Scyther? No. But you've got... Uh, did you have Gust in hand? I do not. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, but... You could evolve the Dug Trio. Yes. So I'm just basically going to go for an energy search to try and add some more. Just to, give, just to be able to give some more firepower to the Dug Trio. Yeah, this certainly seems like a, like a fight that's miserable to say the best <laughs> to say the very least. um okay i'm gonna switch next turn although this is starting to uh, get a little do you have weird. another gust in the deck if you have a gust in the deck, then, yeah unless it's a unless it ends up being like a prize card that can uh, be an unfortunate situation one thing i forgot to mention uh, about prize cards is at the beginning of the um, at the beginning of the uh, game, once you've put your uh, Pokemon down at the beginning of the game, you set si up to six cards aside. Those are your prizes. And sometimes crucial cards can be locked behind um, can be locked behind there. Uh, you can um, do some things to mitigate this, um, such as prize checking. You can do that. It's not very efficient to do that, but you can do it. And there are some situations where you would lose a fight unless you hit exactly what you needed to. Um, 
Luckily here, this looks like an okay situation to keep going on, even though yeah, we we yeah we basically but... we basically won. Um, even if he wants to, okay, that's fine. That's <laughs> at, at this point, it's play. it's a matter, it's a question of when this fight. I, I mean, this fight's fun. now over. That was oh, uh, really sorry. annoying. That was a really really annoying Ronald three. I will say, like I said, this is actually the most competent version of Ronald. I so I. It is what yeah, it is, that... but at the very least, we are. This kind of essentially marks the the two thirds checkpoint of this run, more or less. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. yeah give or no, take. More, more, give or take. Now we've got a lot of uh, much easier fights. Uh, now that we've ended the mid game, um, uh, we're doing our first search for Imakuni. Um, just to be clear, Imakuni is. Um, is a special person because not only does he exist in the game have a have one of the weirdest cards in the game that makes no sense, but this dude is a real life dude that cosplays as himself and turns up at TCG events sometimes. This guy is a living legend, and they put him in the game. Um, Imakuni is um, a person, uh, and he has a unique card that uh, is attached to him, and it's called Imakuni question mark. What does Imakuni question mark do? It confuses your active Pokemon. Not, 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 um, not the opposing one, your own one. Um, yeah, it, it's a card of all time. Uh, does it do anything else or is it literally just that? I can't it remember. literally just, well, it confuses your own Pokemon and, oh, well, there's the Imakuni. Um, I really recommend Please. everyone to, oh, oh this is. Oh okay. My days. This is fine. We'll just. We'll, this is why we go for um for for. This is why I'm going for Abra, because we uh, for a second Abra, just because he is a. He can be used as a sacrificial lamb of sorts, and thankfully that leak slap attack is a move that can only be used. I don't remember if it's once uh, per can... duel or once per duel per copy of the card so how leak slap works is i i believe uh, i'll double check it uh I'll, I'll double check but i but, believe it's you can use it until you hit a tails so the once, cool thing you a, a, once you hit a tail you can't do it again uh leak slap so the cool thing about this uh about imakuni one is that is just the idea that this card game has a roaming boss fight is hilarious to begin with. And also, uh, first of all, I highly recommend you guys look up the actual flavor text of the Imakuni card in this game. It is absolutely hilarious. And by the way, if we beat Imakuni, we get one uh, pack of ev uh, one copy of every single booster pack that we can get in this game, which is uh, really, really Lovely. nice. There is all a... Right, so um, there's a category uh -oh. in this uh, involve Imakuni that we call Imakuni percent. It's literally beat Imakuni uh, three times as fast as possible, and it is a joy. That's a, that's a, that's a fun little run. Um, so let me just spell out far fetched. Flip a coin. If tails, this t attack does nothing. Either way, you can't use this attack again as long as far fetched stays in play. Even putting far fetched onto the bench won't let you use it again. Um, this is the the power of Farfetch'd is weird because yes, you can slap for thirty, but the other thing about it is it's actually, as far as I remember, it was used in the um, the TAS run of this way back when, because uh, when we can manipulate the RNG, hitting for thirty means we can hit like Abras and Ratatas for thirty and knock them out in one hit. Um, which means the uh, task was obscenely fast. Um, it just something that, uh, that us humans could never hope to achieve, um, just simply because of RNG manipulation. Um, we got close. Uh, some people have gotten close, and it's why we um, we've separated the categories a bit now because there are ways to manipulate RNG and uh, uh, to a much higher extent than. Um, what we're doing here, because here we're not manipulating RNG at all, unless it's in a duel and you're just changing coin flips and stuff. Um, you can do much. Uh, you can do much more than that. Um, 
there's a lot there's a lot that's possible based on how the Game Boy games work. So if you know the um, the Mount Moon Minute, for example, in Pokemon Red, that involves uh, resetting the game to reset RNG, and then you perform a certain uh, amount of inputs. The same can be done with T TCG for fights, and you can line up um, good uh, you can line up good fights based on uh, how much time you spend after resetting. Um, I believe that's a separate category in its own right, uh, if I remember correctly, because I think it w was it Huang Bro that came in and uh, just destroyed uh, our old records by using that exact exploit. Uh, I believe it was. Um, but yeah, uh, we don't do that uh, because it's it takes the fun. It, well, we don't do that because uh, we don't do that unless you want to do that category. Because for the mo for the main categories like uh, any percent glitchless and all battles, the more fun way to run it is to bash your head against an RNG wall like a madman. Um, we're all mad here, and we all love RNG. Uh, and by love, I mean absolutely love it. Uh, <laughs> So, I yeah. mean, at some point, I mean, we love this game to the point that we are willing to overlook the fact that this is a massive, and I mean, massive RNG uh, fest. But hey, this is the one category, uh, this is the one game where, hey, you can fight. By the way, that was my best ever Rick in all battles. So, woohoo. Um, that was, uh, so this is the one game where you can have an Abra one shot Mewtwo, which is what we did at the start of that fight. So. Uh, I'm You'd actually going to do it. I'm going to do one very slight change. So, so I, I sent Ragentreg my. Yeah, no, I see it. That's fine. My 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 um my splits, and this is actually not the fight. I'm actually resetting. This is actually not the fight that is supposed to happen next. So, I'm supposed to be fighting Eric now. I'm fighting David, and what is this opening hand? Three oaks. Wow, that's that's, and we might have, and we might lose already. Wow. Uh, the reason why I'm making this last second change is because for the Abras and Kadabra, well, they were working fine, but the other thing is that this is uh, Eric and David are two of the more annoying fights that you would have to that you encounter in this game, because Eric, first of all, uh, uh David, who we are. Uh, facing. Actually, I'm gonna. I am going to hit a plus. Do I have a plus right there? It is. Uh, David. And also hit give myself a defender. Yes. Uh, David. Uh, you see meows. You see coughing. You see farfetch. Guess what the name of his deck is? The Nidoran deck. Yes. That well-known Nidoran. Um. Farfetch. Uh, yes. That <laughs> is it. Man. All right. Yeah. The, the game designers um, had a lot of fun making the decks, clearly, but uh, consistency uh, and stuff. Oh, sort there's of finally stuff. There's, there's the um, cadaver, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot so believe it took this Science long. Club, um, which I didn't make clear earlier. Science Club, that's basically the poison, the ghost, the psychic club, the sort of sciencey. Um, the sciencey nature of things. Um, so science obviously means far-fetched for some reason. Um, but um, yeah, science is a uh, is they ran out of things to do because effectively you have two uh, in quotes grass gems. One of them is science, and one of them is the literal grass gem. But science at least has psychic Pokemon in the mix too, because um, they're ghosts or Mewtwo's or stuff. And science is cool. Uh, so yeah. Um, oh, oh! When did you get those? Lovely, lovely things. We love energy removals. They can. Oh, the fourth plus power. We we are Finally. stocked for trainers. But I guess this is the nature of running the all battles. You get a lot better trainers than what we're used to. Um, basically, normal in normal runs. Um, you only get so many packs, and because you're seeing so many more packs in all battles, your decks should be more consistent. Not guaranteed, obviously. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, getting a lot of trainers seems like... Seems, seems pretty good here. Uh, just means your deck will be more consistent over the course of the game. And now we're using the all-powerful um, Mewtwo. Um, one of the few time, one of the very, very few cases where we ramp, uh, by ramp I mean get more energy than intended, um, in the game. Uh, it's basically it and Blastoise, I believe, are the only ones that um, ramp, if I remember. Blastoise has a very... Um, classic ability called Rain Dance, uh, which just says you can slap on as many water energies as you have during your turn. This has survived to the current TCG uh, under the name of Baxcalibur currently, um, except that's, um, I believe that's called Super Cold, but that's an ability that has stood the test of time as an incredible ability. Uh, Mewtwo, what Mewtwo does is for one energy, it searches your discard pile for up to two psychic energy, well, up to two energy of any type, and puts it on Mewtwo. So when we're playing with Mewtwo, what we really want to see is Computer Search, which just goes two cards, Item Finder, with any item, which, uh, with any trainer, which just goes two cards, or a Professor Rope, preferably. Um, you can live without them, um, and in this case, Mysterious Fossil as a chump blocker um, can serve good duty here to save us a turn. Still want to hit, uh, just means we have to wait three turns here. It's a bit of a pain, because um, Machop, uh, Machop, Hitmonchan, everything deals 20 damage, which is quite a lot of damage, as it turns out, because Mewtwo, while it has 70 HP, oh my lord. Ooh, this is... This is a... Um, Alright, how do we... We're good, uh, we're good. Okay, we can... You have to KO that, don't you? Yes, we have to KO that, but thankfully, uh, nothing in Mitch's deck, unless he has plus power... The only, okay, no, only the only thing that could have been a the only thing that could have been a threat would have been the Mankey if he had a plus power, but he did not, or at least he didn't he didn't go that route. So I'm fine, which is why one of the very few times Super Potion actually ends up being uh, super useful and reliable. And this went from a definite loss to a relatively good uh, Mitch. Under two minutes for Mitch, I would say is always a good Mitch. Yep. Yep, no, Mitch is one of... Mitch isn't necessarily the hardest fight around, but it's definitely one of the more scary ones, just because of... You usually only run Mewtwo, because Mewtwo... Or you run Mewtwo, sometimes you run Articuno. I've seen some strats where you run Articuno because you've got uh, fighting resistance. The problem with Articuno is it's much, much slower, even though it's way safer than, um, than uh, Mewtwo. Um, it's just a lot, lot slower, uh, unfortunately. Uh, Mewtwo is the fastest because you can get attacking on turn two, but because you take full damage, it's uh, very, very scary um, a lot of the time, which is a shame. Uh, but now we're moving on to a bunch of firefights because we have not, uh, we have not beaten the Grass Gym Leader, which is one of the ones in the Any Percent route, Any Percent Glitchers. It's one of the fights we finish first, in fact, if if she's... Nikki's not... Nikki's usually the first or second gym leader you beat, sometimes third, in any percent. But here we're fighting her last, and that's simply because of deck routing. Um, here we're going to swap onto fire deck because you've got uh, a few fights, Robert, Daniel, and Kristen to fight with the fire deck. And, and fire is just more efficient. Um, it's just a more efficient way of beating... Um, of uh, beating uh, these uh, next few trainers, and this is how routing works for the game. You often just want to you route the fights based on what decks you have at the time, uh, rather than anything else. Uh, which, you know, it is what it, it is. Uh, it's just how it works, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it right, perfect. also a lot Wrap of different that. routes, a lot of different routes throughout the game. Here, though, we have Rapidash. Rapidash is great. We love Rapidash because it's pretty and uh, has a lovely main and um, has one of the few times where we get to be in charge of RNG. We get to flip a coin and decide that, no, you can't hit us. Um, unfortunately, we've got Tails twice, which is just, hey, <laughs> here we are. Uh, is there anything yeah. I can do? Ooh, plus power. Perfect. Ooh, plus power. Can we get the coin flip? Perfect. Yay, now... heads. We love heads. Yeah, agility. Were... It... 
if you can if you remember what agility does in the video games uh congratulations you are 150 percent wrong on what agility does in this game agility doesn't up your speed uh all it does is uh inflict or at least in rapid dash's case it inflicts 30 damage and as rag and Trek mentioned uh you can flip a coin and if land says congratulations your opponent cannot do anything to you uh next turn which is uh, uh really funny how it got it got switched up so much in yeah in some of these it, attacks it, because this game doesn't have any concept of speed, I guess that what the designers of the card game are going for was, oh my gosh, you're so far, you're too fast to hit. We just we, like we, this fight. Can't hit me. Um, and uh, if that was a guaranteed thing, it would be absurdly broken. So that's why it's tied to a coin flip in the same way par paralysis and all these stalling tactics um, uh, are extremely powerful. Um, Thankfully, uh, this is it's only on two Pokemon, I believe. I think R Rapidash definitely has it. Although, uh, uh, Flying Pikachu also has it, but although I think Flying it's under Pikachu. a different, it's under That's a right. different name, if I remember correctly. Is it like it, uh, it might just be called Fly on Flying Pikachu? Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm trying to see. Do I want to? Let's see if I can go for a first turn win. Yeah, no, it uh, is. It is called. It is called Fly on Flying Pikachu. Yeah. I'm um, gonna shuffle, shuffle the deck, and I don't find Professor Oak. Double color. Come on, double color Liz is in here. I swear. There it is. First. There turn it win. is. Yay. First turn win. All that. We love our first all, turn wins. <laughs> actually, two straight fights where we actually get a first turn win. That's actually crazy. That's very yep. rare. It's very rare. It's possible, but very rare. Um, what that's called in Pokemon terms is a donk, D-O-N-K. Um, that's just uh, you you beat a deck with them not being able to respond at all. And it's usually a first turn knockout. Donks can exist in uh, this game because you can attack on the first turn. Uh, the designers at some point realize that's kind of stupid. Y you can't do that anymore. And so currently... Um, in uh, current TCG, you can't use supporters, which are Professor Oak equivalents, and you can't attack on the first turn, unless an attack specifically says otherwise, which is extremely rare. Um, and usually those attacks are just uh, getting energy or getting cards, selection, something like that. Um, but yeah, um, being able to attack on the first turn is ridiculous, and that's why we want to go first from as many fights as we can. Unfortunately, it's down to a coin flip, and uh, that's just the way of things. Um, okay, you can get a plus power, perfect. Nice. Now, this is kind of the bread and butter of the Ponyta strats in the, sort of this segment of any percent and also in uh, all battles, is the fact that because there are a couple of Pokemon that have 40 HP and are weak to fire, if you're able, and we've been extremely lucky, like this has been a fantastic. Um, uh, that's, a, that's a good, that's a good one. We have, uh, if, if we've been extremely fortunate with this uh, with this Ponyta deck, is that if you're able to get everything down right, then congrats, uh, you can win on turn one, which is just just absurd. Uh, Pokemon Trader, perfect, could not have gotten one at a better time. Uh, Trader is as the name implies. If uh, you trade one Pokemon from your hand to search one out in your deck that could be that might be extremely useful come the grand master fights yes um, especially since we up to this point we've only had we only have two the trios in this in this run but uh thankfully we actually have two more fights before we get to the grand master that gives us coliseum packs which are the ones then can give us a duck trio. So we have we have two more, fi three fights total, two fights that uh, can give us a duck trio. So hopefully we are, hopefully we can round the bases and give us something good. Uh, so now, now we're on... moving back to the um, water deck. Uh, this is the point where you can, where you tell if you've got enough dugongs and seals. Um, luckily 4-4 dugong seal is excellent. We kind of want to have dugong for the most part. It's just the most efficient and safest um, version. 
You can do Magic Up Gyarados, although the problem with Magic Up Gyarados is Gyarados is rare. That's not the rarer card of Magic Up and Gyarados. Funnily enough, it's harder to get um, Magic Up than it is Gyarados. It's led to times, and I've had this before, um, where I've had four Gyaradoses because of how the packs broke and zero Magic Up. That's very common. And the reason for this is the way packs work in this game is they are tied to um, the trainer. Uh, they're tied to the trainer's type. Uh, what I mean by this is if um, if we beat, when we beat um, this guy here, um, he's a fire type person, so he will give us a fire type pack. And what that means is the rare is significantly more likely to be one of the fire rares in um, the pack. Um, why that means we get a lot of Gyarados is, is because when we go to the water gym, and because we have to fight all the water gyms... Oh my god, water what is that? <laughs> okay, is there any way that I could have stopped, I can stop this? Uh, yes, if I... Uh, maybe. Maybe, we'll see. That was absurd. Um, obscene turn. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, as it happens, we just get a ton. It, 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 we have a, uh, a lot of likelihood to get all the um, all the funky all the all the Pokemon. Fun yeah. fact: um, when um, the the thing about trainers in this game, trainers do not count as having a type, which makes sense. Uh, which means Computer Search and Item Finder, two rare trainers we really want to see always have a big disadvantage of um, finding them, unfortunately. Uh, it's just uh, it's just how it is. Um, I, nothing we can do about it. We just get lucky when we do. Luckily, though, Dugtrio has a high chance to to happen uh, amongst normal gameplay because we fight uh, all the fighting club members and most of them have Colosseum packs. I can't remember if all of them do, but most of them do. Um, and Colosseum packs are the ones which have both Hitmonchan and Doug Trio. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, I forgot about Imakuni giving trend third packs. That's the only that's the only exception. <laughs> that is the only exception, that's quite right. I'm trying to think of uh, what would uh, if there really is any other I don't I actually don't think I think Imakuni might be the only one that gives Oh what well, there might be so throughout this game, you actually get free booster packs uh, that you can access in the mail, which is what I was doing at the very beginning in terms of the mail manipulation. Uh, the one thing that I that uh, you all, in addition to that is that um, you get booster packs by hitting certain milestones throughout the entire game. I believe there might be a couple of those packs that also gives you, oh my goodness, three plus powers. This is unbelievable. We gotta love. We, we we love plus power, um, but uh, um, I believe one of I believe some of the booster packs that you get is also uh, classified under trainer, if I remember correctly. I think it's possible, and I think it's also possible that some of them are typeless, which means you have um, an equal chance of getting any of the rares in the pack. Um, I, I I'm pretty sure there are a few typeless ones in the mail. Um, some definitely do have types, but some don't. Um, and that, it's just weird game coding things, you know. They do, they do what they want. It's how game devs work. They do what they want, and they chose this. Which does mean, however, unfortunately, that when you do the all cards run, um, you can lead to situations where you're fighting uh, one trainer multiple times for one rare, even though it's the most likely case, doesn't mean that it, it, you're going to get it. Um, and uh, I think I remember my first, uh, my first and probably only all cards run. Um, the biggest issue I had was getting one of the uncommons, not one of the rares, which was kind of hysterical, to be honest. All right, now it's time to. Cr Are you going to crack it? Oh, you're not cracking open the packs. Okay, cool. Just going straight no. in. Yep, we're going straight right. in. It, it's totally to not because it's totally because I don't remember offhand what 
what are the packs for Colosseum on a Bulbasaur deck because, uh, mm -hmm. or at least in the order that we go for them. Totally not because mm -hmm. of that. <laughs> I mean, we have, we have a ton of great trainers and we have more than, and if we have more than one copy of Duck Trio, we can manage. I mean, I've had, I've had fantastic, uh, runs through the Pokemon Dome on one Duck Trio. So I actually feel pretty, I feel pretty confident about this run. Yeah, um, just uh, what I like to have usually, and the second Doug Trio means a lot because um, the second Doug Trio means the first. Sometimes you get a Doug Trio prized; it's very rare. Uh, sometimes you can get that, have that happen, um, and the second one makes those odds incredibly low. I think it's like one in a hundred to have both your um, Doug Trios prized, or thereabouts, um, if you have two of them. Um, and that's why I like having um, the second one, and I will usually go for male manipulation to try and get one of those dog trios. Um, I'll only attempt it once, I won't go further than that, because the thing about mani male manipulations uh, as well is there's a very convoluted way of get of um, opening packs in correct orders to modify the RNG in order to get us the res we want. Um, I'll leave it at that, but the long story short, uh, other than that is because when you're on the mail screen, the RNG is not advancing because you don't see the overworld, and um, that that way we can just pick packs, cherry pick packs, and we'll get the exact ones we want, which is great. Um, which just means you can have more consistency, especially when you're a newer player. You can have a lot more consistency um, in the uh, just before the final fights. Uh, now we're coming to one of the run enders of all time. Uh, this is Steve. We don't like Steve. Steve Steve is a menace. Um, mostly because... Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, we, yeah, because we, we, we didn't go over uh, the gimmick of the Grandmasters, so they each have every single one of these... Uh, oh, this is really unfortunate. <laughs> um, I'm just praying for that. This is un... This is... Uh, this is this a is really a weird bad one. bricking. I, 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 uh, like, oh, okay, but now you're good. Now you're good. Yeah. There we go. Um, you're good now. We were we really didn't want to use a Professor Oak there because we would have lost Doug Trio, and there's no way for us to recover the Doug Trio. Um, thankfully, we've gotten past that. Now we slap on Doug Trio, and now we're good for the rest of the fight. But that was an, a situation where we really did not want to discard the Doug Trio. Um, but yeah, all of the Grandmasters have their um, have their uh, respective legendary birds including Dragonite, because that's definitely a bird. Um, but uh, here we've we've seen Moltres. Uh, well, we didn't see Moltres, which is good news. Um, now we're on to Zapdos, Steve and Zapdos. Zapdos is, is by far the most annoying of all of them, because when Zapdos is played, you deal 30 damage randomly to one of your opponent's Pokemon. This can lead to us losing the fight on turn one. Because, uh, because because we usually only put one Diglett in, and sometimes we'll put two in, um, just for Steve, um, because it's because he can knock it out without us being able to respond. Um, Articun, on the other hand, with Jack, this deck is horrible because Lapras. Um, there's a lot of reasons this deck is horrible to fight. Lapras is one. Lap Lapras is the bane of Diglett, not because of weakness, just because it deals um, 10 damage, then 20 damage on the second turn, and will knock us out. Um, Articuno here is also scary because it does actually, th it's one of the few things that can threaten to KO um, Doug Trio. Oh, but Jack Brick. Run. Jack Brick, that's okay. Yeah, we like we like bricks. Come on. Um, Hold on, I actually want to scout out. Is this going to be a coin flip? No, it, it's going to be a tail. So we are... You've got the energy search to there. scout. Yeah, I just wanted to see if that Articuno, if that thing was going to attack next turn. It. Wow, Jack is bricking really bad. We, we love to see it. We love to see it. He's bricking hard. This can happen very rarely. Um. Because um, he seems to have... He's got his four Pokemon, he's got his four energy, but he didn't give all of the energy to the Articuno, which is great for us. Um, now we have to get through Lapras, but thankfully Lapras has no energy attached. Um, so we can get through this fight rather calmly, frankly, compared to most Jack fights. 
Normally Jack has the problems of the Articuno, the Dugong threat, which is a real threat. We use Dugong, we know its power. Um, uh, Dugong, Articuno, and Lapras usually kill runs uh, in some way. Um, unfortunately, that's just how it is. Do I have uh, a dust? I don't. It's not even in uh, the... Oh, it's at the literal bottom of the deck. Do I have a way well, to shop? I guess you, I, I guess you just slapped. Just slap twice. Just slap twice. It's fine. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. It's only one price. Um, I'm just worried because every new, every single turn with Jack. The thing about Jack is that it, literally, you can if you give him even one turn to do anything, it could completely throw the run. I have lost PB paces just because he Jack got just one more turn. So I just yeah. wanted to be a hundred percent sure, but uh, this is actually a relatively calm Jack. I, this was like under two and a half minutes. That's that's all you can that'll ask for, do. really. That that that'll do. That'll do. Um, so um, Rod here is the Dragon Master, and he's just the worst like... one. He's the worst one because he's in terms of actually being a good player, he is not good at all. So Dragon Master means he uses Charizard, Gyarados, because they kind of they're dragon-like. I'll give them credit where credit's due. That's kind of close. Um, and uh, and he also uses Dra the Dratini line because uh, it's the only dragon in the early in the first game. Um, quite similar to Lance, but unfortunately for Jack, um, uh, sorry for Rod, um, those cards aren't good uh, for the most part. Magikarp takes a lot of setup. Um, does he have fire energy in the deck or not? I, I can never remember. You kind of cut out. Does he have fire what? Does he have fire energy in the deck or not? I can't remember. All he has are double colorless and the... and water. Which is funny okay. considering that his... the only... Ooh, this is actually... Ooh. This is getting sketchy. That's fine. Well, um, no, I think this is still fine. You've got a plus power. You're you good. You good. You got a plus power. power. I have a plus power, meaning I can have another plus power for. Is he actually going to? Is he actually going to Charizard? Okay, he's no. not. No, he's because we have Tom that, that's... So, <laughs> so yeah, he ain't gonna do nothing. Don't worry. <laughs> I will say this is a. Uh... Ooh, wait a minute. Mm? Wait. Uh, no energy? Okay, okay. no, uh, hold on. You, you could use the super... Can you not just use but the I super? Miss, but I would miss out on the... You know what? That's... Actually, wait. Uh, let's give... You could... Oh, you could have just attached for turn. Oh, well, don't worry about it. The problem is, uh, I want I wanted to take out that Charmeleon, and if I pass yeah. for turn, then... Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It would have been gone. Yeah, I think... Yeah, no, we're still good. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah, Everything's don't fine. switch out. Oh, this is... Oh, Lord. Okay, this oh, is no. about the worst fight I've seen from him in a long time. Uh, Oak and Prey? Where's Gust? Oh. Where is my okay. Gust? Come on, Gust, Gust, Gust. We're looking for Gust of Wind. That's the one card we're looking for here. Right? What do we have? Calm Search. Calm Search? Yeah, there you go, there you go. You're out. So yeah, this is one of the convoluted lines you can take. Oh my gosh, it was the next cut. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> this uh, is the uh, worst uh, rod in uh, year, in one of the worst rods I've had in a very long time. I think that is the worst rod I've ever seen. That's certainly uh, that's certainly up there. Um, normally he's you know not what, that you, terrible. You know what <laughs> happens? I I, I it, because I I wounded his pride. That's the problem. Mm. Um, ooh, okay. All right, welcome to Ronald. Uh, the final yes. Ronald, also known as Ron one of the worst built decks of all time, that just slows you down. Um, you, yeah, this will you will actually you might get to see every single uh, all of the unique cards that you uh, that we never actually got to see. We have not encountered a single legendary card in this entire run. I mean, on Rod, it's normal because he has to evolve to Dragonite. That's normal. Wait a oh minute, my this goes tails. Please, 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 oh please. My oh my God. days. <laughs> And we get the free Ronald. Um, we get the free Ronald to end the day. Okay, so what we miss. This is literally, uh, time's coming up, by the way. Time's coming up, by the way. Um, but this is literally the best. Uh, the 
unless you get a turn one Ronald, this is the best possible. We didn't get a chance to look at, oh, look at this pretty Moltres card. And look at this pretty Articuno card. <laughs> we never saw a single one of them. Look at this Zapdos card. Unironically, that Zapdos card is one of the best cards in the game, full stop. We use it in the all cards run um, because it's so powerful. And time's coming very, very soon. And now. Time. Okay. Um, GG's, Toro. <laughs> oh, wow. I cannot believe that, first of all, that dome was in, let me see. That dome was On my nice own, uh, that was an under 11 minute dome and that's with a three minute rod. Aside that's from the rod, aside from good, the rod, that's a that's a good like take out, take out the rod. This is one of the greatest domes ever. That's that's a but, good that's 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 a good dome. That if it weren't for rod, that would have been an incredible dome. Yeah, that would um, have been a sub ten minute dome, which is unbelievable. Okay, so let's kind of so okay so to kind of let's talk about Ronald. Let's talk about yeah, Ronald. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, very briefly. So the thing about Ronald is that Ronald had all four of those legendary cards. It he and he also had the evolutions and and Dratini. Here's kind of the funny thing is, Ronald. So Articuno and Zapdos all require their uh their respective energies to be able to attack. Articuno requires water. Zapdos requires lightning. Moltres requires fire. And Ronald, the Moltres that Ronald has, you play it onto the field and you get at random one to four fire energy. Ronald only has fire energy. Just think about it real quick. Zapdos requires lightning energy and Articuno requires water energy. Ronald doesn't have either of them. It is one of the worst, as Rock said, one of the worst constructed decks in the entire, that you will ever see because ha like, Half of his uh, legendary cards are literal damage sponges. They do nothing but stall for one turn, and that's it. Well, the, the thing the thing is, what we didn't see in that dome was because we didn't see any of the legendary birds, we didn't have to explain how terrible it is to see one of the legendary birds. The biggest problem with them is they all have third uh, resistance to fighting, which means we need to take two plus powers and two hits, or three hits with Doug Trio at full power um, in order to in order to um, uh, to knock them out. And Scoop Up does exist in some of those decks. Yes, it does, and especially Jack. Jack has the most Scoop Ups out of all of the elite, uh, of all of the Grandmasters. Um, yes, it's incredibly annoying. Um, but because we didn't see those, we had an incredibly fast dome, except for the worst rod of all time. Um, yeah. more or less. Um, and Do yeah, Dome no, is a funny place. Dome is a funny it place. Is the, yeah, it is. I mean, it's the worst part of the game, uh, in terms of, you know, runs dying at the dome. But the fact that this was the, the slowest fight being Rod is, it's if terrible. you, if you speed run this game enough times, Rod being your slowest fight at the dome is one of the most hilarious things you can uh, imagine. Um, but yes, that is all battles. We basically went through the entire game, um, aside from kind of a slow-ish start in the in the early portion of the first uh, 35, 40 minutes of it, um, we actually have been keeping a relatively good pace. In fact, our worst point, and just keeping my own split, was when we were going through the second uh, poke up, uh, the second, uh, of the fire trainers from that point onwards we saved four minutes on my splits so we wow. actually got four minutes four minutes faster on that segment than the old world record of one hour and 26 minutes uh current world record holder is welsh uh rta with 122 that he got actually like a week ago or something it was very recently it very, was very recent recently. so shout outs to welsh who is an incredible runner uh, like an uh, like one of the one of the goats of this game. So yeah, that is uh, Pokemon TCG All Battles, the first ever showcase, and boy, what a showcase for it was this category. Ups and downs. There's plenty to. There's plenty I didn't mention, but you know, 
this is the nature of the game. Sometimes these things, these sort of niche cases, um, show up, and sometimes they don't. And sometimes you get an 11 minute dome with a three minute board. Uh, <laughs> what can you say? This game is an this game is a, a mess of RNG, but thankfully the banger music and just the fun gameplay and the moment to moment decisions really, really submit this as like my favorite speed game. No, hands down. It like. No matter what I do, I will always have fond memories of playing this, because it's, it's just so much fun. Um, but good job, Toro. It was an excellent run to showcase it all, and uh, yeah. Yeah, really. And uh, by the way, anybody that uh, that uh, wants to check out this game, uh, I get, it's on the it's on the Nintendo Switch uh, via Nintendo Switch Online, so you can play it on your Switch, and it is, you know, it's just as good it's just as uh crisp as that it actually runs faster on the nintendo switch believe it or not um yep. so which which has forced us to create uh a Seven way to sort things. of retime the uh any switch runs but yeah this game has gone through a phenomenal renaissance over the last year because of that and we are really uh we're really excited for what this game has in store in terms of its uh future for speed running so yeah, I am uh, I am Tora Knight. I run this game quite a bit, and thanks to uh, this marathon, and now officially back in the grind uh, to yeah. uh, to reclaim my world record at a uh, uh, I have four I have three and a half minutes to try and reclaim my world record, and you can see me on a fairly regular basis now, essentially trying to go for these types of uh, runs plus any percent glitchless and rock. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Rog is another phenomenal runner who, up until like a few weeks ago, was another top 10 runner in any percent glitch list. So, kind of goes to show that this category, um, the any percent glitch list category, has gotten way competitive. And I'm just so excited for this new wave of runners that's kind of come in over the, uh, the last year or so. And please do follow Toro. Toro actually streams regularly. I, sadly, because of life situation, I can't do it on a regular basis. I might look to do some more when I get some free time. So, and I will be back on that grind to get uh, get into that uh, top ten again because, hey, it's a matter of pride on the line. And also, I've always wanted to break the fifty-five minute barrier on um, on the uh, on the any percent glitch list. That's the one thing I haven't done that I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I can do it at some point. But I'm, but for now, follow Toro. Toro's a great runner, great fun, and. Uh, yeah, no, that's all I have to say, really. Yep, and uh, with that, uh, we are out. Thanks so much to uh, Pokemon Speedrun Marathon for inviting, for bringing us back on for another great year. And uh, can't wait to see the rest of the runs that we have uh, coming in for, uh, I guess, this this last day of um, uh, po uh, PSR Marathon 2024. So with that, I'm Turner Knight, and he's Rock and Trek, and we will see you all in the next one. Ciao.